we're going to visit uh, Dicker Bratton Bridge, which is about five kilometers up this road. And uh, there's a little parking area there. I thought I might take you through all the mods I've done, uh, or more, should I say more accurately, what mods worked and what mods didn't. So we'll, uh, we'll pick it up a little bit later on down the track, as, uh, as much as I'd love to show you five kilometers of riding through the lovely countryside. Well, that, <laughs> that, that's a, it's a, it's a bucket, <laughs> it's a bucket, okay, uh, all right, so, yeah, uh, maybe I'll leave the video on. Okay, first mod that I'm going to start off with, I think, is going to be the one that's made the most uh, changes to the bike, if that makes sense, and that is the DK Customs FLIED inline, I suppose, enrichment devices. Now, I can't really show you what they do really that much, but they're all behind this little section here. Um, and uh, if you look at my previous mod, I've shown you where, how to set them up and so forth. I didn't touch the factory settings on from the factory, oddly enough, because that was what my bike required. It's done wonders for the bike. It's idling about 50 to 80 RPM lower than it would usually, but from purely from an old schooler point of view, when you whip the plugs out to have a look and see if the mixtures are right, it's a lovely coffee colour in here. It's of superb. So excellent work there from the DK Customs boys. On to the second mod that I'm okay with. I don't really like them. Um, I like the idea, but I don't like the ones that I've chosen to use, which are the indicators front ones, not the rear, but these ones right here. I'll get right up and close for that one. Now what you might not be able to see, you can just see it on the edge there maybe, if the uh, GoPro will, will do that properly. I'll see it later. Basically they're starting to oxidize. They are quite, and this one shows it a lot more, around, just around here where my fingernail is. They've started to oxidize quite considerably. Now I ride in all weathers um, and I do wash my bike, but not as often as some. So your mileage may vary, but from that point of view, not really happy with those indicators. Now I've got two more sets to try. One I've already tried to hook in up to the battery and I don't think it's gonna be bright enough. And another set that I've just bought that uh, I'm very, very confident is going to do the job. So from that point of view, there will be another video on indicators, I'm afraid to say. Um, while I'm in the front here, I will talk about the front suspension and or the, and the front engine mount. From a front suspension point of view, what I've done on the front here is I've put Progressive heavy duty shocks from the company called Progressive and also changed the weight of the fork oil. Now what that seems to have done is made it very a, a much more harsher ride. An example is on the way in here we had this um, bridge over there very very bumpy. If I keep an eye on this these are barely moving up and down. Uh, I have yet to see this go in much higher than that or well, you can almost see where it's been today. Now that has a positive benefit. Uh, if you're a hard rider, of course, that's brilliant. You know, you're not, uh, you're not diving in under brakes, etc. However, it does mean that on cruises, you are feeling every single bump. And that dovetails nicely into the front mount at the bottom down here. It's called a predator mount. I'm going to get onto the dirt. <laughs> it's nice and wet too. It's probably not a brilliant idea, but still. It's called a predator mount. It's a bit dirty at the moment. But basically that has done wonders for the, oh, let me get back up, for the ride. Eric Buell once said that he was designed the diner to be like on the knife handling. And I didn't really quite understand that until you realize a knife on its side is doing, is literally tip tip. And I will say, this bike now does that. The, this bike is the easiest bike to tip into a corner I have ever had. Okay, I've only had a CBR, a CB, and another CBR. <laughs> uh, Lambs bikes, uh, learner bikes, sports bikes, or sport tourers. But I have to say the turning in for this has been wonderful. 
The negative again is the harshness and uh, where we are in this rural area we have a lot of bad roads but also long roads with not a lot of twisties, not a lot of things you need to do, attack the corners etc. So from that point of view again a worthy update but not a wondrous update. Another small mod that uh, you may not have seen is I replaced the Harley Davidson shifter rod with an aftermarket one. Now you might be saying oh really it's an, it's an aftermarket it looks a bit poxy but what I noticed on the Harley Davidson one and people say you should really replace it anyway is that this little joint here which on this is a Helms joint on the Harley is not a Helms joint it's just a ball and joint with a rubber thing over the top and it will eventually fail with especially with hard shifting I'm not saying I hard shift the bike but simple mod got helm joints on either side and uh, it is what it is while I'm down here I don't know what this is called it's the DK customs thing that moves the coil from here to here <laughs> now what it does is it moves the coil from from this position to this position which is more out in the air I don't know if you've ever felt coils but they do get hot so any sort of coolant for this is good it allows more coolant around this area and I can feel that really quite hot in there and on top of that it allowed me to quickly stick in a nice little voltage meter as you can see there 13.6 upside down of course and I should put that up because I was caught in the rain the other day so it probably doesn't work anymore is it worth it yeah yeah you get rid of the horn the horn for me is now underneath the seat um, it does the job so uh, you yeah, get rid of the horn cowbell thing uh, is it worth it yeah it probably is actually I'd say um, so uh, that's pretty much everything on this side of the bike that I've done uh, the next big mod that I am super happy about is the engine breather now I've had a few comments about the engine breather such as why would you do it why should you do it etc etc um, and frankly it made absolute sense whenever I take this off to check the throat of the uh, intake it now no longer has any oil or blowback or anything and when I have a quick look down through there with a little endoscope it's absolutely clean same with the spark plugs on the other side of the of the other side of the engine so to recap I basically drilled a little hole two holes on either side of the stock running uh, this is it here the that, that line there running a line down through down through to the other side and originally I get not going to get down on the ground but I originally put it in a little space between in, near the swing arm the space is the part where the rear engine tr mount is on the bike now unbeknownst to me I didn't know that and I think that the hot oil mist and hot oil vapors coming from that breather blowing onto the rear engine mount is probably was probably not a good idea as part of the front engine you also do the rear you can have a look on my videos I've done I show you all of that so I'm going to cop to the fact that I did that uh, so what I've done now is I've actually put it underneath the primary underneath here hopefully that shows and yes I'm venting to atmosphere now uh, Greta Thunberg is going to hunt me down and do evil things to my my head but um, it works and uh, it's one drop of oil maybe once a, once a week maybe something like that I've also done the other tip that I found online from the Harley uh, forum which is to have your oil sit one blip under full as in you don't put your oil all the way up to the top blip full you leave it at three quarters it's still got enough oil to get around but it's got a little less where that can be pulled up through the engine and up into the top I don't know if it's a good thing or not but I did notice it wasn't as bad once I did that so I now do that religiously uh, it's up for an oil change soon now anyway uh, about 500k to go so that is one mod that I think is well worth it uh, there are people saying it's not worth it Harley-Davidson designed it a specific way 
I just don't truck with the idea of putting oil back into a combustion chamber. Just, just me. Now the other mod might be considered cosmetic, but for me, who likes to keep an eye on my engine, for me it's almost a, why isn't this standard? And that is an oil pressure gauge. Now, just to show you what's happening, it's going along, pops onto a uh, line down through. And because this is a twin cam, look, I can't remember if it's a twin cam A or a twin cam B, but you can't go directly into these two ports right here, which are part of where the oil filter goes into. Uh, some people can go right into there, if and I think it's a soft tail, I'm not sure. Do, please do not quote me on that. So uh, I went in with a, um, a splitter, if you like, or a, uh, an adapter. So the one that you see there, which my finger is pointing to, is the oil feed. That goes up to the oil gauge, and I will cop to checking the oil pressure oh, maybe once every 10 kilometers, something like that. I'm just one of those people that likes to keep an eye on the oil pressure. One question I get asked a lot about is the use of a plastic line, this plastic line here. Now, if you take a close look at it, it's got that lovely heat wrap over the top of it, and it also is wrapped on the inside as well. I've had no problems with it, no leaks, nothing, and it's been running for probably five to 6,000 kilometers, something like that, maybe a little bit more than that. The only thing I have done, and I'll cop to this, is it's all leaked out. The silicon oil in here has leaked out. Now, I've had a commenter on my on one of my um, uh, on one of my videos say that I should cut the rubber nubbin. I didn't cut the rubber nubbin, and that little rubber nubbin, which should be on the back there, I don't know if the GoPro is going to pick that up, but it's just there. Well, it's not there. And so under the pressure, it's come flying off and uh, it's leaked all the oil out of the gauge. Still works perfectly fine. It's a cheap gauge, so I can always change it again. I'm a bit annoyed that the rubber thing came out. I thought I was uh, being intelligent. It's obvious that you do have to cut it. It just, for me, it doesn't seem right that if you're going to cut something here, the oil is at the top of the gauge. It is going to go through this well. It has. It's, it's leaked out now. So, you know, I don't know quite what to do about that one, but uh, it's working still. It works perfectly well, uh, and I'm getting my 30 PSI at uh, about 2,500 RPM. Now I'll work my way back to the rear. Now, the rear has had just the one modification, which is these, which are the Progressive 412 Heavy Duty shocks. Now, I've mounted them, twisted them around uh, 300, uh, sorry, 180 degrees so that the sticker is on the other side. And I don't know if that is a problem or not, but they are not the best. Or should I say I'm not impressed, as impressed as some people are with them. The ones I took off, which are the original 2013 Harley-Davidson chrome ones, are probably quite saggy, but my God, do they ever make for a comfortable ride. And it's just got me thinking I might either turn them around so that stickers out this way. The only difference between that I can think of is this top washer has a, uh, oh, I don't know what you call that, a, um, a space there anyway between them. And that could be the reason why they're so harsh. They're on their lowest setting right now. Uh, beginning to think maybe I shouldn't have got the heavy duty ones. It's the ones that were, they were the ones that were um, recommended. But uh, so that one's not so crash hot uh, from a modification point of view. While we're back down here, the very last uh, mod to talk about is the lack of baffles and the addition of torque inserts. Just about there is the DK Customs Torque Washer. I'll put the correct name up on the screen. And uh, I don't know if you'll see it right now, but it's rotated around 45 degrees, as in it is doing, it is sitting in the pipe like that as a 45 degrees. I initially had it like that straight away, and um, I didn't really notice any difference in speed or anything, but it was, uh, 
it was just a bit sort of uh, backfiry, if you like. I then put it directly in line, which of course is essentially, well, why have it there? I mean, yes, it's in the way, but why have it there? And I found my sweet spot is 45 degrees. Real simple to undo the, uh, undo the nut underneath there that you see, hopefully. Let's see, can you see that? Looks like you can. Undo the nut. Oh, it's not too hot anyway. Undo the nut and turn it around. Now, what's the mod I hate the most? Well, the mod I hate the most are the indicators. Uh, one, they're rather small. Uh, they are very bright. You can see them. I don't see. Do I don't think cars have any problems in seeing them, but I, d I just don't like them. They've oxidised super quickly. Um, to their credit, they haven't oxidised any further, but they went like that within two, three weeks. Uh, the next mods I'm not super happy about are the suspension, uh, the front suspension and the rear. I'm going to try a lighter weight, as in a 15 or even a 10, 10 weight oil in here. I've put the 20 weight oil in there. I don't know if that's going to have an effect or not, but I'm not happy with them. They've had close to 5,000 kilometers to bed in. I think that's enough time. So I'm not really happy with that side of the equation. A lot of the mods are just, yep, yeah, that works, that doesn't. But there is one mod that I absolutely think is wondrous, and that is, and unfortunately I can't show it to you that very well, the FLIEDs sitting in the back here. Those ignition, inline ignition devices have made this bike completely sit up and be a different bike. I'm not saying it was a bad bike when I picked it up. It was heavily lean, very lean, but it was fast enough. It was, um, it was obviously cool enough because <laughs> I bought it. But as soon as I put those in, it was, it was like I had been, it had been dyno tuned, which essentially it had, well, not really, but it, it had been uh, rich enriched. What are the positives? Oh, sorry, what are the negatives? Well, I have noticed that the fuel uh, amount, uh, fuel consumption has gone up. Uh, now that's that's absolutely perfectly explain uh, explainable down to the fact that you are you're going from too lean and therefore not using a lot of fuel to possibly in the mid range or slightly too rich. I don't have a problem with that. It's a smallish tank. It gives me wonderful amounts of pleasure, and I don't have any. Okay, I don't have a, a lot <laughs> of vices. So I think overall that's my best mod. My worst mod are the indicators, which thankfully are a simple fix. It's just take this off, s s slot a new one in, and yeah, the suspension. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll leave you with a, a quick runaround of the Vickerbrand Bridge area. If you're up this way and you've got a bike, that is an electric barbecue down there. That's now open, which is good. It used to be on that side, so they've actually moved it so they, they, you can have a slightly bigger mob. The road's in, coming that direction, not, not in the other direction, the direction behind me. I'll move around. Not that direction. They are dirt and gravel. Difficult. If you've got an ADV bike, fine. If you've got a bike like that, then probably not. Um, I've done it, but it's a bit hair raising. Um, coming in this way, you can come off Bruce Highway. There's a bit of uh, one road that you might have seen at the earlier part of this video. And then you're, th and you're here. And uh, as you can hear, other than the wind and some fat anonymous punk making a vid YouTube video, it's silent. So that is the Dickabram Park and Mod video.